Hi, I'm Elizabeth Dawson, and you're tuning in right now to Ways to Love Your Money. Uh, we have a great guest here, and this is a personal friend of mine as well. Uh, this is Larry Silverstein, and he's um, available to us on Skype, so you're just going to see me today. But he is the Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer of Lafayette Life Insurance Company. Uh, we've known each other for several years, and he's been uh, a big part of... Uh, uh, you know, just the up and coming of my career for probably the last 10 to 12 years and uh, couldn't be more uh, proud of, of our relationship and our friendship along that time period as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to invite Larry onto the show and uh, hopefully you'll get to know him a little bit more like I know him and uh, you'll enjoy this conversation that we're going to have as well. So welcome, Larry. Thank you for being part of the show. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. I'm honored to be here. Oh, thank you so much. And I know we just spent a, a week together um, on, on a trip that we were both on, and uh, we're both back, and we're a little bit tanner today and a little bit shinier, And um, but we had a great time to just uh, be able to connect with people that we know and um, couldn't be happier about that, and it's an honor to have you on the show, too. Thank you. Good, good. So I want people to know a little bit who Larry Silverstein is, and uh, we know that you have a great professional career, but at the same time, you're a real person too. And uh, you know, all those years ago when you were, you know, growing up, a young man and uh, starting life, and uh, knowing certain things that you wanted to accomplish in your in your life, uh, what what were some of the things that helped you become more financially responsible uh, to to be able to attack all your goals, dreams, and desires to to create? you know, the, the professional life and the family life and, and, and the life you wanted for your children along the way. Do you have a few things that you want people to hear and um, think about you or know about you? Sure. Okay. sure. Uh, I, I grew up playing a lot of sports, mm -hmm. and I believe uh, what you learn in sports transpires uh, pretty closely. The microcosms that you learn of being on a team or as an individual – uh, transfer very closely to your business world and in many ways your personal life as well. For me, it's been pretty much the foundation of of who I am and and and, and how I approach things uh, is that athletic or sports mentality. Um, you know, sometimes your best strength can be your biggest weakness and okay. I'm very competitive and so mm -hmm. sometimes in certain situations I probably have to uh, curtail that a little bit but um, it's really helped me every step of the way to at times outperform the person next to me mm -hmm. or at times to understand um, how to have empathy and levity that you would learn through through a sports uh, analogy and sports uh, happening. Well, I'm glad that you shared that with me because I know you do love sports and I know um, your nature is competitive as mine is as well. And I've seen team um, team events or team sports where uh, you have to work together to become successful and it's not just one person that can create that success on their own. Uh, and, and I do believe that you you feel the same way. Uh, and I also think, too, um, sometimes I'm a, a bigger competition for myself that I always want to succeed and achieve greater things that are, are greater than the year before or five years ago to accomplish, you know, even more success. And, and, and really those, those personal goals that I set out for myself, would you kind of agree with some of those things, too, for you? Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, never being satisfied and always trying to – improve and as you get older you realize that uh, maybe your body won't let you do some of the things that improve on some of the things that you used to be able to do and mm -hmm. your mind says do it and your body won't let you <laughs> but in business and in your personal life you can still do that that sure. never stops and, sure. and <clears throat> part of your first question of how did I get that financial responsibility mm -hmm. um you know, it, it did take improvement and it did take discipline and it did take uh, some of the characteristics that you would learn through sports and through and the, the discipline thereof. Um, and I do know you really well, I believe, Elizabeth, and it's, you are competitive as well. Uh, you are always one of our very top agents. And if and you look at the the people next to you that you compete with, and you want to beat them, and mm -hmm. and I think that uh, that has helped you become the successful person that you are uh, as well. 
Well, and my competition too is to be different and a point of difference to everyone that I have so privileged to be able to work with. Uh, because, you know, financial decisions are so difficult for people to make in life. Uh, money, money concerns are, you know, the top um, uh, anxiety-driven piece in, in a person's life. And whether you're purchasing a home for the first time or the tenth time or, uh, you know, learning how to protect your family the right way because, you know, you might be the breadwinner or how do you protect your spouse in the event of something happening to you. And uh, there's so many different components. It's not just about what we want uh, for, for the future where so many people get perplexed perplexed on just what they want for retirement. Uh, it's, it's about what's the now, what's the today, and how do we, how do we achieve what's uh, most important to us today and how do we protect it? And yes, I mean, you've pegged me. I've, I've been a very competitive person out there for a long time, but for the right reasons where I think sometimes people get caught up in the wrong reasons about how to be competitive. And it's truly not just always about winning. It's about uh, doing the right thing for the right people at the right time in the right moment and uh, really finding that, that full service approach to to, to making sure that um, everything I touch, and I know that you're kind of the same way, that everything I touch has has a, a really that, that success-driven formula, but to also have perfect protection in the best way we possibly can uh, to protect the ones we love, to protect our families, uh, um, and, and to look out for, for maybe something we didn't think about before. Uh, but the right now and the benefits of right now of how to do that, still have a great lifestyle and still have so much more. Um, and I know along the way, you know, you have you have children that have been in sports. I know specifically one of your sons is on a college uh, uh, baseball team right now, and I know that that kind of consumes you uh, at times because you just want him to do so well. Um, so, so how's that going right now? How's his uh, sports career and his first year of college going right now? Yeah, it's you know, before I get to that, I'd like yeah. to say part of the sports analogy that I see from you, though, Elizabeth, is mm -hmm. not just your. Um, your ability to compete, but you, your ability to coach. Yes. And I've seen you help your clients through the years. I've watched you help your mm -hmm. clients through so many of their life happenings. Mm -hmm. And essentially what you do is you coach them uh, sometimes uh, with different techniques, but that's really where I think you excel. You've coached me in some financial situations that have helped me become the person that I am in that regard in that regard as well and really helped me see things um, more comprehensively mm -hmm. and through a, a much broader lens that I would have I would not have been capable of seeing if you hadn't opened my eyes to some of those things so um, that's the analogy that I start to see from you you're that that winning coach that can can make more out of a person if you give them the opportunity to let you train them. Well, I appreciate you saying that because we do pride what, what I do um, as being a financial coach. And, and that's really what it's all about. It's taking people through very you know, complex, very difficult to maybe understand situations and, and coming, coming up with simple solutions so that uh, whatever, whatever the strategy is all about, it's how do we do it in a, uh, a simplified approach so that just about anyone who's not in a professional situation in the, in, you know, the financial services industry so they can understand it and really embrace it because, uh, and that's again a passion of mine because I really do want to coach and I appreciate you uh, mentioning that. Uh, I want them to, so, to make sure that they have the right tools and the right techniques to be able to create a success out of what they're, what they're wanting to accomplish. Yeah, you've definitely done that for me and I feel like I know quite a bit about it and you saw you've opened my eyes to some different angles that I wasn't aware of. But to my son, who I do love to talk about, <laughs> my children and their sports, he's at uh, a college, he's a freshman. I am guilty as a parent of, of, of thinking that <laughs> things should happen more more quickly for him. And like you said, I can sometimes get consumed by it. Mm -hmm. But by the time your children are in college and they're pursuing uh, whatever it is they want to pursue, their degree, in this case baseball, it's really on him, and it's really his happiness. Mm -hmm. You, I really have to um, sometimes have my wife and my friends like Elizabeth tell me <laughs> that, you know, it's if this is about him and his life and what makes him happy. And even though we strive to make sure our children are happy, mm -hmm. it's time for them to succeed or fail based on their own merits. And, you know, I'm just there to support now. Sure. 
And that's a lot of wisdom <laughs> because so, so much of the time we want our kids to have the best outcome in everything and, and we're their biggest fan and sometimes they don't realize it at the time when we're raising them. Uh, but we, we want to be, you know, everything for them. We want them to succeed as, as, uh, as we see them in our eyes because, you know, our children can pretty much do no wrong, but they do <laughs> and they need to learn and we can't always teach them everything. But... Uh, let's say talking to your kids out there or other kids or even my kids, I mean, you've, you've met my children. Uh, what would you tell these kids of the next generation, the, the future, um, to start doing about their, their financial world um, and their knowledge and to maybe get a different perspective? As, as you've said, I've given you a different perspective, which I'm, I'm so glad that I've been able to do that. I'm honored that I've been able to do that for you. Um, what would you, what would you uh, basically maybe say to your daughter right now or or even an, another colleague's child, or, or just this next generation of millennials that are that are really, you know, the largest demographic that we have in history right now. What would you tell them as as a call to action to figure out how to um, start thinking about, you know, their their well being today, tomorrow, and you know, when they even get closer to retirement? W would you give them any words of encouragement? Yeah, I would give them lots of encouragement. I would tell them not to believe what you're what the media or what the conventional thoughts are. Um, conventional thoughts uh, in when it comes to finances and to your financial wherewithal, I don't think are always correct. I mean, I, I disagree with Dave Ramsey. I disagree with Susie Orman. I agree with Elizabeth Dawson. I agree with um, some of the other... Uh, whole life insurance and, and financial planners that, that I have learned from mm -hmm. and that I have worked with. And so I would say read, read Elizabeth's book, read Barry's, Barry Dyke's book, read and understand and don't just accept what you may find on the internet or what you may, what conventional wisdom has told you. Try and maintain uh, on a second level the control of your money and don't necessarily assume that the uh, that the government has your best interests at heart. I'm so glad that you said that because we we attribute that to traditional thinking and uh, you know if traditional thinking or just saving in your 401k or just saving at a bank account or or saying someone's going to do that for me later or the government's going to take care of me or the company I'm working for is going to take care of me. We talk about that as being you know traditional thinking and if traditional thinking were right, everyone would be rich and no one would need any kind of financial you know knowledge or education or they just think that oh I can pick that right stock and I'm going to just make a success for myself and and I'm never going to have to worry about tomorrow or next week or next year um, yes if everything traditionally worked um, the way they say you know that it would work then then we would all have um, you know no no need for further education but that's why we do because the non-traditional more holistic type of thinking will actually embrace us to have more future success for ourselves that that we really can measure and we can really depend on being there um, and to look for the guarantees in life, not just the guarantee of, you know, death and taxes. We want the guarantee of our future so that we know we can, we can have the financial, um, you know, strength and success and support that we, that we really want to have and uh, think about it realistically. Um, that takes me to another question I kind of want to fast forward with you about because so many people uh, that uh, I have uh, spoken to are, are, are looking at retirement and maybe, you know, we're lucky if we start working with them in 10 years before, but it's more like five years or three years or literally next week that retirement's going to happen. Uh, there's so much to think about and put your you know, all, all your, you know, your, your dots on every I, your crosses on every T and, and, and really managing what your expectations are for when you get to retirement and, and what that maybe said dollar amount is that we have to have net of taxes every single month to live and be really realistic about, did we do a good job to get us there? Because again, we can't depend on the government. We can't depend on our employer that they did it for us. We have to start to research, just like you said, reading my book, um, which is the reason that we have the show, Ways to Love Your Money, and it's about the show, um, about the book, you know, Wealth by Design. And uh, there's some really great people that I know out there that have written more books, like you just mentioned, Barry Dyke or uh, John Moriarty or uh, just, just a whole plethora of other people. We want to educate people on the right, you know, the right path, the right, you know, forward footing. And so 
I, I guess I'll go backwards and say, okay, so Larry, what do you think people should be considering if they're, let's say, 10 years out, five years out, three years out, or tomorrow, um, in, in respect to um, their belief in what they should be doing about uh, retirement and planning the right way to live a long life ahead? Well, that's the question would vary by individual, and sure. they and obviously they. Uh, my opinion is they go to you, and they they give that they um, reveal whatever situation they're mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. I personally, as I get closer to retirement, I and I really have been this way for quite some time. Sure. I believe in the guarantees that uh, will be necessary in retirement. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have me or my wife be in a situation where we're looking back and we're out of money and we're looking back and we mm -hmm. say, well, we wish we would have done this or we right. certainly wish we would have done that. Um, my personal needs are uh, pretty simplistic mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't need uh, a lot in retirement, but I do need to know that I'm that I won't uh, outlive my money, and more importantly, that my wife won't outlive our money. So, I've been all about the guarantees that are available to me in mm -hmm. retirement for the last several years, and I believe that that comfort uh, and understanding sequence of returns mm -hmm. and certain things that will uh, affect your distribution phase of your retirement are probably the most paramount as you get closer to your retirement. Retirement. So would you say people's call to action is to kind of get that analysis now about what their retirement should look like and, and what they can expect and uh, basically not just to you know live for them in their moment, but to, to really outlive them for them and their spouse. And then uh, uh, a lot of people are even thinking today, I don't know how much of a legacy I'm going to pass down, but we know we're going to pass down a legacy to our children. Uh, I can't, I can't uh, stress enough about what you just say. It's look at the guarantees, not the hypothetical output, and, and really get some knowledge and education out there to, to make sure your decisions are right. You know, get the right an analysis about how that income is going to be. You know, how is it going to be all situated? And I know you and I have talked about long-term care as well and, and making sure that we can avoid you know, what's called a spend down of our assets. If we want to avoid a, a spend down of our assets, then we need to really start looking at what's it going to cost for us to, to have real good care when we get into retirement, or at least the decisions that you want to be able to make versus, you know, spending down all your assets so that Medicare and uh, Social Security might come in and help you out. Uh, I know we've talked about all those things, and we could probably talk all day long because we do have those great kind of conversations, but I'm so glad that you've shared your personal perspective with me and you know, with our listeners and our viewers, and uh, it's a joy to have you on the show, and uh, I'd love for you to come back again in the future because I think you do have so much more of a perspective that you can share, um, and hopefully you'll agree to that. <laughs> uh, I, absolutely, I'd agree to it, and um, I'd I am a big, not only a friend, but I've again, Elizabeth, I have seen the countless number of people that you've helped, mm -hmm. and your help is has been, I've seen from uh, issuance to death claim, mm -hmm. I've seen the annuities that have gave, given people a lifetime stream of income, so I've actually, I'm, I've actually witnessed you help people, and so... I, I'm not just a, a friend, but I have, I'm actually a witness to what uh, the good things that you have done. Well, thank you so much. I mean, that just means so much to me, Larry. Um, I, I, it probably brings a little bit of a tear to my eye. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate your kind words. Uh, and, okay. you know, thank you so much for being a part of the show. It's been, a, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you here. And uh, we hope we get to talk with you more in the future. Okay, I look forward to it. Okay, thank you so much, Larry. I just wanted to say thank you so much to Larry Silverstein for his perspective. Uh, you know, this is a very powerful... Um, uh, you know, vice president and uh, chief marketing officer for a major company uh, that we've been so honored to do business with. But, you know, it's hearing from the heart about how things and perspectives 
uh, perspectives about money and finance and, and what it means to certain people. Truly, what is so much power, more powerful for people in their future is a guaranteed outcome. How does it affect people's lives? What does your situation look like? And, you know, I, I hate to say this, if, if you passed away today and you were the age of 50 or 45 or 40 and you have um, a spouse and children, how would you want that to be, you know, handled or taken care of? Or let's say we fast forward into retirement and you're at 70 years of age and something happens and there's a health event and you start to spend down your assets. Well, well, what about your surviving spouse? Will they have enough money to be able to uh, survive uh, the rest of their life without the concern or worries or fears of running out of it? If you don't have that confidence in your in your you know financial situation, your picture today, your big overall approach to how your finances really kind of piece together like a puzzle, you need to be asking yourselves those questions. Your call to action should be you know finding out what does my income perspective look like in retirement, but most importantly, how do I protect those that I love today? Uh, regardless of what stage you are in life, and it's not just about working for retirement. I have had uh, the pleasure and honor to work with with people that, um, you know, over the last 20 plus years, that you know, um, people that have become very dear and near to me. That now they've passed away, and I and I see their children, and they're still working so hard to 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 build assets to to be able to retire, and now their health is ailing. I don't want anyone that's listening to this show or watching this show to be in a situation where, you know, you've worked your entire life, you're, you're 60, you're 62, you're 67, and all of a sudden now a health event starts to happen in your life. And you didn't take the time to enjoy the best part of your life with the ones you love or even just experiencing life, you know, about, about those dreams that you, you, you dreamt when you were maybe in your, you know, teens or your 20s and said, gosh, when I grow up or when I'm financially successful or when I retire, I want to do X, Y, and Z. I would hate for anyone to get to that part of their life and say, I can't stop working because I can't retire. I can't do what I want to do. And then all of a sudden... It's gone. The time is gone. The health is gone. You know, the events in life, they've kind of passed you by. And now, you know, what do you do? Well, you worked really hard for an event in your life that just never was able to happen. I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, but that's what I have a passion to help people see, that they can retire earlier, that they can stay retired and never have a fear of running out of that money. And it's really a passion of mine to make sure that people have that knowledge and education. And even if you don't think you have any money, Believe me, I'm sure you have more than you realize that you've worked really hard to save. Uh, you know, we have a saying around here that if you have more than a half, uh, you know, a half a million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars or more um, in, in retirement savings or savings altogether, then you might be effectively able to retire now. You might actually be retired and not know that you have these benefits ahead of you. So, if you want that analysis and you want a complimentary consultation with me and my team, give us a call at 619-640-2622. Again, I'm so grateful to have the privilege of having Larry Silverstein on our show. He's an incredible mind, an incredible resource, and an incredible friend that I've had over all these years that um, I'm glad that he shared his experiences of what he's seen with what we do. It's not why we invited him on the show to, to give a huge testimonial. It's really about, you know, we want to help and change people's lives. That's our goal. That's our goal in all of the work that we do with each and every person that we're so blessed and honored to work with. So without further ado, we will say goodbye for today's show, but we, we hope to have you come back for the next shows and shows and shows and shows that keep on coming back. Um, so there's, there's hopefully some uh, information that you've heard today as well as other things on previous shows that have, have your brain kind of thinking about, gosh, I didn't think about that. I really didn't have that perspective. Well, take that perspective to heart, get educated, Get a copy of our book, you know, Ways to Love Your Money is, is designed by this book, and it's Wealth by Design. Uh, we want you to have a copy of that, so give us a call for that as well. Uh, get educated. Get knowledge. Don't be the norm. Don't be the traditional thought person or look at the traditional thought leaders. Look at people that are a little bit more holistic in approach that can really talk about all the different pieces that need to go in your puzzle in life to make sure you have the best success at, at hand. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We look forward to having you listen to more sh shows in the future. Take care.
The information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.